So I want to take a moment to review the formation of the moon, because this is a pretty fantastic thing. And there was actually an article just posted a couple of days ago about how now we know that the moon actually formed, and the Earth may have formed about 60 million years earlier than previously thought. So the Earth is about 60 million years older than what we thought. It's pretty awesome. So the way the moon forms, we have to go back into time. Right? When the Earth initially formed, it was molten. Right? It was this big molten mass. And it was this big molten homogeneous mass. And I'd be saying, well, what is the word homogeneous? It means the same throughout. We had not developed Earth's layers yet. Right? So there was no crust, no mantle, no core. It was all one thing, right? It was all kind of spread out. Well, during this initial formation, a very large object collided with the Earth. Okay. Now, there's a couple schools of thought on this. Okay. It could have been an asteroid. Okay. By asteroid, at this point, we mean planetesimal. This is a part of what could have been a new planet, right, as everything's kind of congealing and coming together. It also could have been a small planet. There are some factions of astronomers that think that there might have actually been a planet between Mars and Jupiter. And if that, that planet, obviously, something bad happened to it, right, it was on a collision course with a very large asteroid, or Darth Vader came by and blew it up. In any event, it blew up into pieces. So this could be an asteroid as a remnant from another small planet. But in any event, there was a collision, a very large collision. And as it collided, right, if you know anything about inertia, when you push something, right, well, that inertia is going to continue. So what happened is it blew off some of the Earth. So as this collides in, some of the Earth is going to get blown off in the outer space. Now, don't forget the Earth still has a gravitational pull. So the Earth is still trying to tug these objects back. However, these objects are hitting each other. So over time, what's going to happen is these objects, right, these bits and pieces of Earth, are going to start coming together. Right, so now you see maybe we have three instead of 50, right? And they're going to keep coming together and coming together and colliding until they make one big object, and that's the moon. Now you might say, well, that's kind of fantastic. How do we know this? There are two absolute lines of evidence that show us the moon actually, in fact, came from the Earth. The first is the rock type. Both the Earth and the moon are made of the same exact rock type. Same mineral percentages, everything. It's called anorthosite feldspar. All right, but we see that. The second is the moon is moving away from the Earth at about one inch a year. So what's interesting about this, right, is because the moon essentially came out of the Earth, it still has remnant inertia to go that way. Well, Earth is still slowly, right, tugging back on the moon, right, trying to hold it in place. But the moon is still trying to move this way. So what happens is the moon's slowing down, but it's still moving further and further and further away from the Earth. And the only way you can explain that is it has to have some remnant inertia pushing it in that direction. So because of these two facts, we know without a doubt that the moon actually came from the Earth itself due to a collision with a large object. Astronomy and science, it's pretty awesome stuff.